Okay, welcome to the Documentation Special Interest Group Office Hours. This is the 5th of October, 2020, and let's look at the agenda. Okay, here we go. So presentation proposal for October 15, I believe it was. Is that right, or was it 16? Uh, maybe 14. Okay, is one topic. Then Hacktoberfest progress report, probably from me. Jenkins Docker tutorial fixes. This is one, Vlad, where I wanted to just ask you some questions to clarify what you learned from that and have you share with us, oh, hey, I had to make these changes this way and this way in order to make the tutorial work. So you've, if I understand the tutorial, I haven't, uh, the fix, I haven't, I haven't read it in detail yet, but it replaces the blue ocean image with uh, the official image. Right, and there are several places where the, this needs to be done. I'm just taking just tutorial section, which reference to kind of yeah, a that, separate section inside the installation. And I was not confident that that was even feasible, and so I am so delighted to hear that to hear that you've you've made progress enough to submit a pull request. Thank you. Okay, good. Any other topics we should put on our agenda today? Guess we should probably put one in. Let's put it in Hacktoberfest triage progress, uh, review pro progress. And Jonathan, do you want anything on Wiki Wiki migration progress? No, not this different. I just sent some PRs to earn my to search too, uh, and. Right now we have uh, all issues uh, registers on GitHub. So now we need to work on it. Great, excellent, okay. Yeah. So uh, maybe, uh, maybe not. Uh, I'm sure in the next weeks, I will just work on uh, page migrations. Great, okay, super. All right, then let's take a look at the presentation proposal. Let me let me bring up the notes on. I'll bring up a page that we can look at together on it. Here it is. So this is my proposed talk. The talk proposal. Uh, Hacktoberfest, Jenkins Docs, and more proposed for Wednesday, October 14th at 2 p.m. UTC. I uh, don't have the Zoom set up yet, so I'll, I haven't had any objections, so I think I'm going to go ahead and create this today and send out the invitation, etc. So the proposal is, I'll do an introduction, welcome everyone to Hacktoberfest. Oleg will do a talk about um, how you can contribute to Jenkins, including the featured projects. And then we wanted to do a, and Jonathan, what I was assuming here was this is three to five minutes, no more. Uh, just with you describing, hey, look, here's, here are the metrics we've been using. So maybe you show the graph of the, of the um, wiki migration progress. Um, here is the table we're using and here's why we're doing having two people review every issue we create to be sure that Hacktoberfest good first issues are really good first issues. That was sort of what I was assuming. So three to five minutes. Is that okay for you? Would you yes. be willing? Yeah, it's a good time to just explain how we prepare ourselves to the Right, right. For me, I think. I think people may, may not understand that as a first time contributor, we've done quite a bit of work to try to make things, make them successful as a first time contributor. Yeah, I get it. Okay. 
yeah. and then Vlad, we were going to have you do building. Oh, sorry, Jen, Jonathan, did you have more? No, no. I just say thank you. Okay. So Vlad, we were going to have you demonstrate how to build and build and experience the Jenkins I.O. site locally. Are you okay doing that? Uh, yes, I'm okay doing this. I just wanted to ask Mark, is it okay if I will use uh, uh, visual, uh, visual code ID? Or... Yeah, it, okay. that's, that's, that's probably the best choice. That seems to be one of the most popular IDEs. And so if you can use that one, that's great. I tend to use Emacs and other rather obscure tools. So if you use something people actually use, that's really wonderful. I was just trying to clarify, do we need to address just new users who are not familiar with ID, who may use just terminal or command, command window, or we are like targeting also some users who are familiar what ID means and so. So I think you can assume familiarity with an IDE and actually mm -hmm. you can assume familiarity with Visual Studio Code. Now, if there's something where you've discovered an interesting or powerful technique you use with Visual Studio Code, by all means, highlight that to them. Because if they see you do something interesting and then you explain, oh, the reason this worked this way is because I did this in Visual Studio Code, that will tend to keep them even more interested. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Yeah, uh, for me, uh, I was uh, a card hard to uh, build my first setup uh, because uh, we are I'm uh, on Windows, so I need to upgrade my system to WSL2. So just after that, I, I can handle it to use the make command properly to. Oh, so you were able to actually do make run inside a WSL window on Windows. Yeah, exactly. Before mm -hmm. that, I, I put a dual boot in my machine to work on Ubuntu. So it's not so simple way to start uh, work with Jenkins site. Yeah, that, that I, my I guess experience... the most important event is the Vlad presentation will be. Right. So, so Vlad, I assume you'll be demonstrating from a Linux computer or from a Mac? I will be demonstrating from a Mac computer, but okay. uh, I have a kind of a Windows computer which I used to test some like previous installations and to co-author with you, Mark, uh, this blog. And I installed Visual Code there, and I guess it is also natural for Windows as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. And how much time do you think you need there? If we gave you 15 or 20 minutes, is that enough? Or do you need 25 or 30? Uh, well, just, I guess, 20 minutes would be enough. And okay. do, do you want to like, reserve some time for answering questions or you don't think? Uh, we, we will put, I assume we'll put 10 minutes or more at the end for question and answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, I'm assuming that Oleg will probably, on featured projects, he'll likely talk for 10 or 15 minutes. Because there are lots of things for him to describe there. He may choose less. That I don't know, but I'll leave it up to his judgment. He is such a good speaker that he can, he can keep audiences interested for a long time. In case if Oleg is going to take only 10, 15 minutes, so I will definitely don't want to use more than 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's because yours, yours is a demonstration. Oleg will not do a demonstration, right? Oleg will just talk. So yes. you, you, the demonstrations are inevitably longer. And I think you should be perfectly, perfectly willing. If you go less than 20 minutes, that's okay. But, but we'll take the 20, we'll give you 20 minutes for sure. Thank you. And I assume I'll spend maybe 10 minutes on just migrating a plugin. There are fewer and fewer to migrate, still many to do, but not as many as there used to be. Okay, and uh, each video we will be required uh, separately, each video for each presentation. Uh, oh, no, we're not. So we're not doing the entire a, session. Right, we will do, we will just do a recording of the entire session and you'll be presenting live and you can share your screen or if you want that if you have slides that you'd like me to share 
I'm confident Oleg will use slides. And if you have slides you'd like to share, we can have you share them or you can send us the Google slides and we'll embed them into a single slide deck for the whole. Yeah. I ask uh, because uh, after the meeting we can use the videos as tutorial next uh, next yes issues. so yes. for example the Vlad video it's important to good first issues and uh, uh, your presentation too for example the next work we work on uh, uh, it's about uh, plugin migration exactly so yes we and use and your we... video as tutorial yes. So we will upload the videos, the recordings after the session is done. And we had good success using last year's recordings in a similar way. So nice. they work, they work very well to do exactly what you said, Jonathan. All right. Okay. So any, oh, oh, that's it, Jonathan. I did not, I was not sure that I got your, your, Biography, okay. How? What would you like it to say? No, it's it's perfect. I like it. Okay, it's great. Stuff of open source. So. <laughs> nice one. Oh, all right, great. And Vlad, are you okay with the biography I put in there for you? Yeah, yeah, sure. I think I just stole yours from the uh, the author, the blog, author bio on on Jenkins.io. But great. Yeah. All right, so. So that feels like we've got a reasonable understanding of what we'll do there. So then I need to put the action item from Mark to publish and promote the Jenkins online meetup. Just, just uh, 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 let me ask, do you need any help with promoting like on social media kind of on twitter or yes yeah so what we'll do is we'd, i'd love to have people retweet the mm -hmm. uh, announcement from uh, jenkins ci i uh, will do a linkedin announcement and if you can like and share that We'll also do one to the Jenkins user mailing list, likely. I think that's been our pattern. I'll have to double check that one, but I believe we've sent those in the past to the Jenkins user list. Any other locations where you, oh, oh, we should, we could consider uh, Reddit. That's a new, a new channel that only just recently arrived and Gitter. Okay. There is Silicon conference. Do you want to mention this presentation there or it's too much? It's a good. I don't know how we would get it onto their list, but we we've been promoting them. So, can CDCon announce it somehow? A good question. I, I don't know. Let me ask. I think I like that. I think that's a very good question. Okay. Any other things on the presentation topic? Next topic, Hacktoberfest progress report. So I haven't done the numbers yet, so you're going to see, we're going to see them live here. If we look at Jenkins CI, and let's look for, let's just look at the Jenkins.io, oh no, that's Jenkins.io. So let's look at this one and merged pull requests with the label Hacktoberfest in the last 
Let's see, we'll just sort by newest. Okay, so if we just scan down, we've had one, two, three, four, looks like just three or four that have merged. So that's not as many as I was hoping. And do we have any in the queue? Uh, so Mark, uh, to event, uh, we need to put the tag Hacktoberfest to each issue. We, we actually do it not. Become valid. We, we, we don't have to because the, the Hacktoberfest team detects that our project has, that our repository has this Hacktoberfest topic. Oh, just the one it's, tag on repository. Okay. Right. So they'll detect them just fine. So the contributors get credit for their contribution just by the pres presence of this one tag. I just, for me, it's a convenience if we also label with Hacktoberfest because then we can do queries ourselves. But that's, that is not a requirement at all. It's just a convenience for us. Okay. So if we look at the closed, closed issues, for instance, all these redirects are Hacktoberfest contributions. But of course, they're nice. pull requests to a different repository. So congratulations, the redirect pull request that you created, the, the redirect process started just, well, you see it here, five days ago, 20 hours ago, etc. It's great progress from those redirect pull requests. I have talked to with some friends. Maybe they want to participate too. Great. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Now, now there's the embarrassing thing here that this blue line on the left shows where I where my triage, my review process stopped, where I ran out of time. So I've still got a bunch of things that I need to review for Hacktoberfest. And I apologize, Jonathan, I haven't done them yet. So there are many, many more that I need to review. And I believe no problem, Mark. If you need some help, just ask. I can help you too. Well, thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah, so it looks it looks very positive. Um, excellent progress on on uh, redirects for wiki.jenkins.io. And several additional pull requests, including terminology corrections. Oh, there is some terminology. Yeah. So, the, and, and I was really pleased with that. So, if we look at the at the closed pull requests, fixed terminology in pipeline tutorials was one I did. Really nice. And then there was one that. Where is her pull request? Uh, a uh, SBA1, SAB1, no, SBA1. No, I'm not finding it, but there was, there was another author that submitted, and this was an action item I had from last week, was to create these terminology pull requests, like this one, and this one, and this one. And one of them has already been taken and resolved all the way to done. Nice. So I think that's all that I had for Hacktoberfest progress. Any other questions or any other things you'd like to discuss on that topic? Not for now. Okay. So Vlad has submitted the Jenkins Docker tutorial fixes. Now this one, I am, I am simply amazed that we got there because for me, this was a very, very, very hard one to imagine successfully working on. So it is use Jenkins official Docker, Jenkins Docker image for tutorials. And the challenge here is that we need to test it locally before it merge, before we merge but this looks so promising. Tell us about what you learned, Vlad. What, what were the things that you had to change in order to make this work? Well, uh, 
uh, as as you know, the goal, uh, kind of long-standing goal, is to stop using outdated uh, Blue Ocean image and start using official Jenkins Jenkins Docker image. I'm talking about Docker image right now, and uh, the problem with Docker image, well, several problems. First, there is no Blue Ocean plugin inside it, and Blue Ocean is kind of it's not one plugin, but several plugins and very interesting and one of the latest projects of uh, Jenkins and Halbys and a lot of people, I guess, are using this. Uh, and another problem, which is uh, uh, actually more interesting, that in case if we're going to use, for instance, declarative pipelines or any pipelines, uh, one of the powerful things about pipelines that we can use uh, ephemeral agents with Docker, uh, for instance, and, uh, well, uh, using um, this image will allow us, of course, to modify this pipeline, but execution will fail because we'll not be able to access Docker uh, CLI. Uh, we'll not be able to use Docker CLI um, uh, inside that Jenkins. Uh, and there are a lot of discussions going back to, I guess, several years ago, <laughs> how to properly solve these issues. Uh, and people are talking about Docker and Docker and uh, somebody is saying, and I uh, somewhere, I guess, on GitHub have summarized all these issues while preparing to Google uh, season of docs uh, for this year. Uh, and people are saying, well, Docker in Docker, there is proper way of doing this, and it is not really, uh, uh, it is not deemed, uh, uh, which is acronym for Docker in Docker, which is used by Docker themselves in case if people would like to develop, uh, contribute to Docker open source. But uh, eventually there is some uh, sequence of commands which we can install, uh, uh, inside Docker file and create another image from our um, official Docker image, which will allow us to access Docker CLI. And I tested this on my Mac and on Windows. Um, uh, and it was of course not very extensive testing, but just sanity test and uh, it worked. Uh, and I also tested it, oh, well, with simple um, declarative pipelines. I tested it with some tutorials. There is simple Java Maven tutorial and I extended it a little bit and included some Python scripts inside. And uh, I tested it with my even multi-branch uh, uh, repository, it worked. And so that is why after doing this presentation on last, I guess it was last week, um, uh, uh, one of the meetups organized by CD Foundation. Uh, well, I thought, well, I can just uh, submit this pull request, which I did uh, actually over this weekend. Uh, and uh, well, I got some comments from Oleg, which um, I uh, trying to understand how to approach to this. Uh, there is, of course, different ways how we can uh, uh, expand and uh, uh, in which direction we can go after that. Uh, because I specified only for tutorials because our installation, as probably you recorded in your discussions with uh, 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 with uh, Zayla, 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 I guess. Uh, uh, you mentioned that, well, this installation, uh, Jenkins installation page in our documentation is very large and it needs to be somehow modified, maybe uh, brought uh, into different chapters, like do, divided into different chapters. But I noticed in one of this, uh, uh, discussions recorded on YouTube, you mentioned, well, there are some other people working on this and probably you meant uh, uh, Jonathan and myself. Uh, or me uh, or so Meg. Yes, exactly. You're, you're precisely right. I thought, 
we don't have to have Znap do that because the rest of us can do those kind of structured things. Yeah. Yeah. And so for this reason, I decided, well, leave this specific installation. There are different files uh, responsible for just installation, but just target just tutorials for now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and like wait for decision consensus, which will be made how we're going to restructure um, uh, installation page. Is it going to be? Uh, like several sections or somehow. But uh, today, I guess, uh, Oleg made this comment about uh, this, uh, um, this little bit low, I guess he made this comment about uh, create simple quick start guide, he mentioned in his comment. And I'm trying to understand what exactly is meant by that and where this quick start guide should go. Is it going to go in documentation or in, uh, is it going to go inside Docker plugin, which is on Jenkins CI? So, uh, so when, when Oleg says customize the, the, uh, customize the image, he's talking about this step that you have very first here of create a Docker file. And, and that's mm -hmm. the step. It's, and I understand, I think I understand why you did it by creating the Docker file. This will let you install. Um, oh, you didn't install plugins. Not yet. Well, uh, uh, it, but uh, it happens later, I assume. Uh, right. But, okay. uh, uh, well, for this, uh, specific, uh, addressing pipelines, this can be done kind of manually and this I can describe because after starting, for instance, Jenkins, we can either manually install, for instance, Blue Ocean plugin or using plugin.txt or whatever, whatever uh, like uh, approach we'll choose. Uh, but with automatic plugin installation, well, <laughs> this is, I guess, we're discussing beyond this. Uh, uh, but with automatic plugin installation, uh, it looks uh, that we need to know the set of plugins which is installed in the base Docker image which we are using. So if we are using, for instance, this LTS 241.1, we need to know the set of plugins which is installed and we can add Blue Ocean, for instance, to it. And this is what I'm doing on, there is GitHub repository called CI-CD, which I authored where I'm describing this entire process, wow. which actually I did on presentation and so, but it is kind of, I sharing it with community, but probably you are not aware. And I can of course point uh, and see if, if you're okay with this approach, we can just somehow embed this inside our um, quick start or a process like how to proceed. Well, this looks, this, this looks marvelously encouraging. This looks wonderful. I'll, I'll do a detailed review and actually go through the tutorial following the directions before we merge it. So that, that's great. And yeah. Uh, let me know, Mark, if you need any help with the references, because I collected while preparing to Google seasonal docs, a lot of different uh, references for research articles about Docker and Docker and mm -hmm. uh, what it's really is it dangerous, not dangerous and so on. And like, um, uh, yeah. yeah that's, so that's great. in case if in case when, you need any help. Right, and no doubt there will be people saying, well, you're running, because that's what this is doing, right, is installing Docker so that we can call Docker from inside the Docker image. Right, and uh, this is targeted, I guess, for uh, Debian um, flavor of um, Linux, because our official image, as I understand, is based on Debian. Correct, that's right, yeah, and and the platform special interest group is discussing how we, how we shift off of Debian, in this case, Debian 10, 9, and get onto Debian 10. Uh, so that's, 
this is this is great. Excellent. Thank you. I'll I'll do some experiments and certainly give you feedback. Thank you. Thank you. And just just some something that I one of the approach which we can I can try to simplify things, but one of the approach we can take Docker file from uh, uh, Docker plugin itself, and there are a lot of Docker files listed over there, uh, which uh, use as the base image not our uh, released version of Jenkins, Docker Jenkins by something like OpenJDK or whatever is based. And, but it will be much longer Docker file and much more complicated. And I'm not sure that we need to do this in our documentation since we can reuse the code which was created by previous talented contributors to Jenkins. Right, well, and, and this is the technique I'm using. So I like the, the, the short, rely on the Jenkins project to deliver me the, the base image for Jenkins, and then I'm going to add additional things that I need to, to get the job to do the next thing that I need. Good, very good. And of course, there are some things which I still don't understand and maybe need some help clarifying with the versioning, for instance, but yeah, this is something which Oh, oh, versioning, and that's an interesting one because, oh, that's fun. We now have the ability in, um, in generating other pages to actually embed this number where this number is the current Jenkins release so that we might be able to make, I, I'll have to do some investigating to see, we might be able to make this page automatically populated with the current Jenkins LTS version number. Yeah, it's interesting because when I looked at Docker uh, plugin, they're saying that current Docker uh, image version is 2.235.1. And so this is something, and it is under Jenkins CI do, uh, slash Docker. Oh, that's surprising. So you're saying that if I look at Jenkins slash Jenkins, it shows. Oh, no. No. no, if oh, no. you're on GitHub. Oh, well, you can exactly. Oh, you oh, oh, you're looking no. at the, okay. You're looking at the source code. Right. For the Docker repository, right. And and this, this, this has a very distinctive build process that causes that, that distinctive build process causes the version number that's embedded in the file to yeah, well, never increment. Uh, so this one says, for instance, it's Jenkins 2.176.2, but it's used, because this is a parameter, it's used to generate every Jenkins version just by changing the parameter. Mm -hmm. And there is, there is releases, I guess, somewhere on this. Correct, page. right, yeah, there are. Yeah, so this, thank you for addressing. Yeah, releases 2, 235, yeah. Yeah, so if we look here, we should see tags. Here is 2.249.1 LTS CentOS 7, 2.249.1 LTS JDK 11, etc. Good, okay, so we are current. That's and that's an interesting one. I'll we should not do a code review live here. That's not the purpose of our meeting today. I'll do, I'll review it and I'll give some feedback because there are some there. I think there are things we may be able to change here to make this more relevant to users and less likely to have to change. Good, excellent. Mm -hmm. Any other things you'd like to highlight to us of things you learned or? Well, just it is general best practice about Docker file, and I guess you and Alec highlighted several times in your presentations and video recordings that when we're using, for instance, base image, it's better to specify not just long-term uh, support release, but specific version, so we know uh, from where this uh, like old 
uh, we're deriving all features from each version. That is why. Right. I that, good. Yeah. So, and that's that's the rationale for this number, rather than just saying LTS. And that makes sense, right? We're saying make it explicit. You need to say you want exactly this version, and it won't change on you then. Right. So just it is compliant with best practices. That is why I put. Very good. Yeah. Um, well, and in documentation itself, I, uh, uh, well, oh, I see this is don't, it is not merged, right? That is fine. Right, this is just showing us the diffs. Yeah, right, right. Under Windows, uh, I'm using like different, for instance, uh, no, no, no. Um, uh, if you go, oh, oh wrong one. So let's go here, Docker, Docker for tutorials on Windows. So here, uh, yeah, on Windows. Uh, all right, uh, it is. Uh, I'm using this uh, different Docker command with different uh, uh, continuation for lines. It is uh, using as before terminal. And on my machine, I'm using something called GitHub terminal, which allows to use, or GitHub window, I guess it is called, uh, uh, which allows to use uh, the same notation, the same syntax as on Linux machines. So we don't need to use this uh, uh, little uh, symbols instead of uh, forward, sl back, forward slashes continuation on the next I see. Okay. But but it involves uh, like explaining how you need to install GitHub terminal and it involves extra software. That is why I just thought, well, maybe in documentation to use extra uh, uh, paragraph, but not discuss what needs to be done to install extra software. Nice, very good. how to access the term separately. That's, that is exceptional. Well done. Anything else you'd like to share with us of things that you learned through the experiment, things that we should be, we, we should be aware? Uh, well, it is not covered in this, but uh, as, as I mentioned, in case if we want to add plugins in automatic way, we need to learn this exact set of plugins in the previous uh, version of Jenkins that you are trying to uh, um, derive from. Uh, and so there is specific uh, script, I guess, which allows us to get the current plugin uh, list of plugins um, from the current version if you do simple REST request to the there is, although in in this particular case, I think that there is a, a relatively simple shortcut that we'll be able to use where we, let's see if I can find the documentation. It will tell us about installing the plugins. Yes, here it is. So there's a new plugin installation manager command line interface that's been bundled as a preview. And we can call it like this. Mm -hmm. And by calling it like that, um, it will install all the dependencies for us. And mm -hmm. the benefit of that is if we say this run minus minus plugins and we say blue ocean, it will install the entire blue ocean suite, all 25 plugins by us calling for one plugin. Oh, it's interesting. And oh. likewise, GitHub branch source here, when mm -hmm. it's called, will install the Git plugin, the Git client plugin, and several others because they're all dependencies of it. So mm -hmm. if we, if we, and there's one plugin for the declarative pipeline and maybe even one for the whole, for all of pipeline plugins. So we may be able to put in a one-liner into your existing script that says, give me Blue Ocean and give me Pipeline, and it will look and act very simple. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it will, uh, okay. So it knows how to get the existing list of plugins and just extend it by what we are already, I see, great. Right, Thanks well, and it, and it knows how to determine the dependencies mm -hmm. of one plugin on another and download all dependencies. So okay. by us saying, I want just Blue Ocean, it will say, oh, it will download the Blue Ocean plugin and then read its list of dependencies and then go request all those dependencies. And do, it does that recursively. Thank you very much, Mark, for pointing this out. Because last week's presentation, I was like doing extra step by uh, doing REST request to existing host. Oh, that's great. Excellent. Thank you. Anything else you'd like to share with us on the Jenkins Docker tutorial, Vlad? Um, no, just wanted to uh, say that I was planning to expand it to installation, to keep in sync tutorials and installation, or I can wait for your comments, Mark. Like, let me uh, uh, know what you want me. Yeah, so I would say don't delay, don't delay your work waiting for my review. My, okay. I've got a number of reviews I have to make. I don't want to make you stop but I will certainly provide a review as soon as I reasonably can and let you know. Sure, mm -hmm. thank you. Great, but I'll be arguing for this. Yeah, that. So we had already talked about reviews, I think. Any other topics we need to, we need to cover today? I guess. No. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Jonathan, what did you say? No, no. I, I didn't. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I, I guess was Vlad. Okay, yeah, well, Vlad. Just, just I wanted to, um, of course, remind that you uh, provided recently this five issues regarding updating terminology, and you label those as newcomer. Uh, like um, good newcomer contributions, something like this. So should we reserve it for uh, newcomers or in case if there is like spare time, should we um, um, uh, solve those issues by- I, I think if, you're, if you are welcome to work on a good first issue, absolutely. So if you feel like working on it, you should do it. Uh, those are those are excellent choices of things that we want to get done, and we would love to be able to tell people that we're making more progress on terminology updates. So absolutely, uh, yes. If you're if you've got a few minutes, I think they're relatively simple, particularly for the two of you, where you already have lots of experience working with the Jenkins.io site. Um, you'll you'll find them very quickly and yes, change this, not change this, yes, change this, and then you submit the pull request. Okay. Yeah, was yeah. yeah, it's important to do this month because you can earn a t-shirt or uh, plant a tree. <laughs> New tree is on word. <laughs> exactly, that's <laughs> great. I was thinking about uh, using one of those issues uh, or maybe Jonathan issues to show during this presentation how to build a site and how to do pull request. And, and you are yeah. welcome to do that, although I have to warn you, they may all be gone by the time we get to that, that meeting. So okay. we, can, we, can, we can, there, there are other places that need terminology updates, so we can certainly create one for you to do in, in the demo. Thank you. Any other topics? Mm -hmm. All right, that, that should conclude our meeting then. I will post a, a link to the recording. Thanks very, very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye Thank you. everyone.